Olivia Chapman from Tortured Vines back again with another episode of Quarantine and Chilled Wine. Today, we're bringing you the first of what's gonna be a few grocery store roundups. So just some of our favorite bottles that you can add to your click list, to your Instacarts, just to be able to enjoy some wonderful, excellent wines at home. I know we're not able to go to the vineyards right now, but make sure you're also still supporting those small, small wineries with any sort of orders that you can if they ship to your states. I know a few local ones, uh, Rooftop Reds in New York City, and then Notches Hills here are actually doing delivery. So that's a really, really fun option as well to get some fresh wine into your home. Um, I think they're actually just coming in and bringing it right to you so you don't really have to wait long for it. So that's a really fun and exciting way to still support the small vineyards. Anyway, today you'll see we have a little bit of a selection here just a few different things to bring to you, bring you guys some options, some things we're enjoying now. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a big proponent of stemmed, cleaned glassware for tastings. So I have my bottle set, my glasses set, even a glass of water on the side, just for if I need to cleanse my palate or take a little breather between tasting these different wines. So what we'll start with is the Noble Sauvignon Blanc. This is personally one of my husband's and mine favorite bottles of wine. We have this in our house pretty much 24 seven and it's one of few bottles he can walk into the store, recognize the label and know we'll like it. So it's something you can definitely find us drinking pretty often. It is a Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc, so that means it is made in New Zealand. It's one of the places that's on our short list of places to visit. So if you've been there before, you know, you can open this wine and kind of think about that region. Or if you're looking at going, Really fun to drink it while you're planning a trip. And then this bottle is the 2019. So this is the newest vintage. So what we'll do now is we'll pour just a little bit in here. You don't need too much to do a proper tasting. But as you can tell, we really like this wine and there wasn't too much left in the bottle. So you may as well just finish it. And then what we're gonna go over is the Wasset systematic approach to wine tasting. So first, what you do is you observe and look at the wine. Now, this one has a tear enclosure, not a cork, so there shouldn't be any cork taint, anything like that in there. And there isn't. And you also wanna look at the color and the intensity. I would call this almost like a pale peach color. So it's not quite golden, not quite straw. So I go with a pale peach. What you want to do next is go for the nose of the wine. And with this, there's no right or wrong answers. It's really just subject to your tasting, what you're getting out of it. Now I'm getting a lot of pear. Definitely some pineapple, a lot of tropical fruits. And then even a little bit of stone fruit, some peach. Next, the most fun part, the tasting. You can go ahead and stir it up. For what's that they call it the palate, but you can also call it the taste. And again, I would say with that one, the attack, which is sort of how that one comes right out and grabs you, is that fruit forward, that tropical fruit. Definitely some pineapple. The palate is crisp, light, refreshing, and then it does have a really smooth finish whenever you finish the wine. You can tell it's highly acidic because it's kind of making my mouth water a little bit, but it does have a very clean finish. You don't really have a lot of that lingering wine taste afterwards. Now, one fun fact about this winery that I didn't know until I did a little bit of research for this post, to make this wine, they actually blend two different regions of Sauvignon Blanc grape. They grow in different valleys and they both give it different tastes, different textures, different feels. So the one valley has more of that tropical fruit flavor, the other one more of that crisp acidity. So what they actually do is they harvest the grapes, ferment them separately, and then mix them afterwards. That gives them the most control over the wine to give them the balanced,
crisp flavors that you get with this bottle of wine. Now a few other notes as far as pairings go. This would be really, really, really great with some fresh summer dishes. So a fresh summer salad, especially a citrus dressing to balance with the citrus and the acidity in the wine. That would be an amazing pairing. Even some scallops, some lemon pepper chicken, things like that would be some recommended pairings for me. We also like to just sit outside and drink it. It's really light, really crisp, really refreshing, a really easy sort of summer drink. Next, we're gonna mix it up and go with this rosé. For our next bottle, we have the Noble Vines 515 Select Rosé. This bottle is the 2018. Now, we love Noble Vines, their whole collection of wine we think is just excellent and wonderful. Um, we actually started drinking the 667, which is their Pinot Noir, when we started dating. My husband was coming over and wanted to bring a bottle of wine because he knows that I love wine. And he actually asked a coworker what he should bring. And he told him the Noble Vine 667 would be a great option. Well, he picked it up, brought the wine, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it for months and months. Just one of our favorite easy pickup wines. Well, it came out a little bit later that he actually didn't know anything about wine. Thought every single wine tasted the same. So I took him to a few wine festivals to debunk that pretty quickly. But otherwise, we still love the Noble Vines family, the Noble Vines wines. There's a little bit of sentimental value to us as well. In this wine, we actually tried the first time at the Nashville Food and Wine Festival. Really fun festival if you ever get the chance to go. Lots of wine, amazing food, really beautiful day. We actually tried this one there for the first time, and they're the ones that told us how it got its name. So it's named the 515 because at that time, everyone in the vineyard stops work for a little bit to just sit down, enjoy a glass of wine, and hang out. So that's sort of their golden hour over at their vineyard. So that's kind of a fun story. It's a really great wine down wine as well. So what we'll do is do a little taste of this one. So again, we'll follow that systematic approach to tasting. First, we'll look at it. Definitely darker than most rosés that have that pale, pale pink. So I would say this actually has sort of a deep salmon color. Next, we want to get the nose. Definitely some fruit, definitely cherry. Some blueberry, some raspberry. It's not too intense on the nose, to be honest. It's not a very in-your-face, bold wine as far as the aromas go. A little bit of herbs too, I would say. So finally, we'll go with the palette. Give it a swirl here. Definitely still some cherry. A little bit more herby um, on the palate than you get on the nose, but it's still very rounded, balanced wine, not very sweet for a rosé. A little bit of a lingering finish, I would say. So I can still kind of taste some of that fruit. Now with this wine, what's really cool is they actually blend grapes as well to make this one. So they take the Grenache, which is the typical rosé grape from Provence in Italy, or excuse me, from Provence in France, what the South of France generally uses for their rosés. So they take that Grenache, which gives it that cherry, that herb, those flavors are typical of a Grenache grape. And then they mix it with some Syrah, which gives it more of that big, bold, cherry feeling. So they mix the two together, and that's how they get this wine. So it's kind of cool that they have, again, a lot of control over what they're getting, because they are mixing the two grapes together. So they can test out different ratios, different amounts, things like that. 
as far as pairing, this wine is a great summer grilled barbecue wine. So it would go really well with grilled salmon, grilled tuna, even uh, barbecue, pulled pork, because it is a little bit more full-bodied for a rosé, so it can stand up to some of those heartier flavors. Again, great bottle to pick up. And I believe this one runs about $10, 10 to $12, I believe, at the store. About the same thing for that Noble Sauvignon Blanc. Next, we'll go to the Chandon. Now, this is one of my husband's and I's favorite bottles. We have it at the house constantly because we love just finding reasons to celebrate, some sparkles, some bubble, all kinds of fun things. And if you saw my last video, you'll notice I had pre-opened all these bottles so that I didn't run into any hiccups. Of course, this one opened like a dream, first try, no problems, no spillage. Tiny open, easy, easy, easy. So of course that just comes with champagne. You never quite know how tight that cork will be on. Um, this one is a little bit more expensive. It does run about $24 for the bottle. So it's slightly, slightly more, but it's definitely, definitely worth it in our opinion. And as far as the years we've been going over years for a lot of them, this is the new vintage. Champagne doesn't always have a year on it. Um, if it's aged, it will, but otherwise it's generally just the new vintage, whatever the newest one released is. All right. And then we can take a look here. You can definitely see the bubbles, that effervesc effervescence, excuse me. Again, this one's really pale and light in color. I'd say it's more of a golden hue though than our Sauvignon Blanc. You can kind of maybe see if we put them side to side. You can definitely see the effervescence in it, which is just beautiful. And then we nose it. Again, it smells very light, crisp, clean. Uh, maybe a little bit of pear as well on this one. Again, most champagnes almost have like a biscuity, like a crumb, a biscuit, sort of that scent to it that you definitely get a little bit of whenever you nose it. And that's just from that second fermentation that it goes under to give it its bubbles. So now we'll take a taste. It's bright, it's crisp, it's refreshing, it's damn good. Um, you do get some of the fruit, I do get a little bit of peach, a little bit of pear, um, fruity but still crisp and light. Again, it has that creamy sort of biscuity finish that most champagnes are known to have uh, and just kind of give it that almost that interesting end. If you drink a lot of champagne you know what I'm talking about with that biscuity kind of mouthful feeling. Now champagne's a really fun one to pair with. You can do a lot of exciting cool pairings. It actually can balance out a lot of foods that have a lot of that umami flavor to it, um, which is really, really, really hard to pair with. And we'll go into that in later in uh, further other videos. But it can pair with a lot of things that are creamy, that are rich, that uh, normally it's kind of sticky to figure out is a good situation with. So things like a Caesar salad, uh, French fries is actually one of the best pairings with champagne. So champagne and French fries is one of those tried and true favorite pairings. Um, Things like truffle popcorn is a really cool pairing as well. We really like to do oysters. Um, so just a couple of recommendations. And now, one fun fact too is that the Chandon Champagne House has Dom Perignon, it has Moet, it has a few other uh, lines underneath the Champagne House. But whenever they started in 1973, the Chandon Brut was actually their very first bottle that they came out with. So it's kind of cool that even though it's one of the lower ranges for the brand, it's still sort of their flagship, their original wine. So just a fun fact most people don't know about the Chandon Champagne. Next, this one was sort of a wild card pick for me. Um, I don't drink a lot of sweet wine. We don't do a lot of Riesling. 
But I just want to give you something, a little bit of variety in this tasting today, just something that would fit everybody's palate. So I picked up this Chateau St. Michel uh, Harvest Select Sweet Riesling 2018 Vintage. This. We'll go into the tasting. Again, about that $10 to $12 price point. Um, this one is different than their regular Riesling. It is a little bit sweeter, a little bit more of a dessert wine, in my opinion. Um, really fun with some cool, sweet pairings. If you watch my other video that talked about pairings, you know that if you want to do something sweet to eat, you need a sweet wine. So if you go back and watch that video, you'll kind of learn a little bit more about that. Um, otherwise, we'll go into the appearance and the tasting of this wine. So if you look at it, I'd say it's almost like the color of like a like straw. Uh, still a pretty light color, not too intense and bold. Definitely our boldest wine today has been that rosé. Nose, it does smell very sweet. I'm getting a lot of pear, a lot of peach. Maybe even a little bit of plum, which is a really unique wine, um, really unique flavor to get in a white wine, especially some reds will generally have a little bit of that plum. All right, now let's go to the palette. Very sweet. A lot of pear and actually some peach. What's interesting is that it's not as sweet as you would think on the finish. The finish does clean a little bit. I mean, it does some have a little bit of balanced acidity to it so that it's not, you know, smack you in the face sweet. It's not like a Jolly Rancher candy, but it is a pretty sweet wine. I get a little bit of peach as well, some stone fruit in it, which does balance it out a little bit in my opinion. Now, with this wine, they even, the winemakers themselves even say it's like drinking a bowl of fruit. So it is that pretty in your face sweet wine. But it's really awesome to have something like that on hand for if you want to do a cheese board. So some mild cheeses would be a great, great pairing. Um, any sort of cookies or fruit tart would be absolutely fabulous with this. Um, anything really sweet or another cool pairing is to do something that's spicy. So like Thai food, Pan-Asian food, anything like that that has sort of that kick to it actually goes really well with a sweet wine because you don't want anything that's too high alcohol, too heavy, otherwise it'll really burn your mouth. So this would actually go really, really, really well with a dish with a little bit of kick to it. So I mean even Hot Cheetos if you're into that would be a pretty cool unique pairing. Upgrade your snack time. So otherwise, if you saw, we did go over a little bit of that Wasset tasting, um, so you can integrate that at home. Really pretty easy, that systematic approach. You now have four really cool, easy bottles to look for in the store. Um, really fun, unique pairings to go with it. So just a little bit of wine knowledge today while you're at home. Otherwise, stay tuned. We'll come up with some more really fun pairing videos, some exercises you can do at home, some more wine knowledge. So just keep on the lookout for that. Otherwise, I hope you all stay safe and make sure you stay thirsty, my friends. Cheers. And make sure you actually do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything that comes out. And then also leave any comments below if there's anything that you'd like to see. And I promise next one we'll have a little bit more of some red wines in our grocery roundup.